Gio Reyna's latest injury is another knock for the young American star, but it might help answer one question for the U.S. men's national team as they enter the World Cup. We're going to break it down next here on Pints and Punditry. So we all saw Gio Reyna kick the ball out of bounds and then walk off the pitch in the U.S.'s uh, last friendly against Saudi Arabia, and we knew right away that wasn't a good sign. Uh, he was scheduled to play 45 minutes. This was at the 30-minute mark. You knew right away something was up. It didn't look bad, so we were hoping for the best, and the news has come out that it's a muscular problem, a strain, uh, whatever, and he's going to be out for a week or two. And honestly, that's great news for a guy who has had just devastating luck with injuries. That's fantastic news. But we're only two months out from the World Cup, and this probably tells us a few things. Now, just because Gio Reyna has had a long history with injuries does not mean he's, mean he's going to be injury-prone his entire career. And, and I don't like hearing those sorts of things. He's 19. Now, obviously, this is not a good sign, and injuries have a way of sort of building upon one another, and you never know if you quite come back from them at full strength. But this is a minor knock that is probably not going to have long-term effects. But with the World Cup only two months away, and him being out for two more weeks, and him already not being at full endurance and fitness, this probably rules him out from being a full game contributor for the U.S. men's national team. And that's just a reality we have to face. Reyna was still working his way back into full fitness. He had yet to play 90 minutes in, in any game for Dortmund or the U.S. men's national team. He wasn't there yet. Um, and that's okay. Had he not gotten hurt, he probably would have built to that by the time the World Cup rolled around. This probably rules that out. And that's a shame because we, the U.S., is only going to go as far as our best players. And Reyna is the one player who has a ceiling that is as high, if not maybe higher, than Christian Pulisic. He, he has the potential to be a truly great player. And he's not there yet, and he's only 19, and the next World Cup in 2026 will be the one where he truly shines. But he had a chance to make a real impact and, and help this team uh, elevate itself. And he's not going to get a chance to do that now. He's not, even if everything goes right after he comes back from this in two weeks, and, and he's healthy from here till Qatar, he's not going to be at a place where he can play for 90 minutes. I think that's unrealistic to expect. But it does help solve some of the questions that we're having about if everybody's healthy, who plays? Well, it eliminates that first caveat of if everybody's healthy. But you have a, a backlog of attacking midfielders and wingers, and in Berhalter's system, there aren't enough places for them. Let's assume that we have a Eunice Musa, Weston McKinney, Tyler Adams midfield, and that one of the Ferreira, Pepe, Sargent, Pifak, haha, yeah, right, players start up top at, at striker. That means you've got two spots on the left and right wing for Christian Pulisic, Brendan Aronson, Tim Weah, and Gio Reyna. Well, this takes Reyna out of that discussion, at least as a starter. And so now you're down to Aarons and Pulisic and Weah, and Weah has been hurt as well. And with a crowded group stage schedule, that might be a rotation where all three of those guys get starts. Um, Reyna, on the other hand, can now feature as a super sub. And I think that's what we're going to see out of him is come in and give this team 30 incredible minutes. Right, Come in at the end, in the middle of the second half, and just go gangbusters. And come in with fresh legs. And, and how many teams, genuinely, how many teams are pulling a talent like Gio Reyna off of their bench in the 60th minute, 70th minute, whatever it is, to come in and make an impact? There are a few. One of them is in their group with England. But there are not that many. And that's a differentiator between them and Wales or Iran. Um, so that could be a real difference maker, and it eliminates the ego discussion of who's the starter. Well, he could be a starter, but he's injured. That's a nice explanation for everybody, that he doesn't have the fitness for 90 minutes. So that gives Burhalter an excuse to only play him short-term and in small spurts. And yes, we'd rather have Gio Reyna out there for 90 minutes, 
but that's not an option right now. So this is a nice alternative. So ideally, he comes back after a couple weeks from this muscular injury, gets back in shape with Dortmund. By then, he could be playing 90 minutes in a, in a game for them, but it may be a little bit of a stretch, and with his history, it's probably a lot to ask. And even if he is, can he do it game after game for the, for the U.S.? Probably not by November. So this gives him an alternative to come off the bench and just attack. And that could be a real difference maker for a U.S. team that struggles to create goals. So I'll be really interested to see if he can get healthy and if this is how it plays out and if Burhalter uses him in this way. And now you're down to Pulisic, Weah, and Aronson. And the obvious solution is sort of Pulisic entrenched on the left side and Weah and Aronson take turns on the right. And you sort of have your solution. So all of a sudden, it sort of works itself out for the men's national team as it typically does because injuries are always a factor. That may be the last development we have for the U.S. men's national team between now and Qatar. We hope it is because the only other ones would be major injuries and hopefully we can avoid those. We'll have more breakdowns as we get closer to Qatar here on Pints and Punditry at Total FIFA Career Mode.